Hello and welcome back to the Football Terrace. Thank you very much for tuning in. Do us a big favour, please hit the like button, please hit the share button as well. Ozil is dominating the headlines this morning. He is being persecuted and ripped from pillar to post in relation to snubbing a 12.5% pay cut that Arsenal have requested. Um, he said that he wants to see the full financial impact of the coronavirus before committing to this. And there is absolute outrage from so many people within football. It's it's a little sad, really. It's a little sad, really, because people ignore so many facts within the matter that need to be addressed. That's what we're here to do with you today. As always, like I say, hit the like and share button. I want, if you're watching this right now on Twitter, if you are, please hit the retweet button. Please come and check out the Football Terrace on YouTube as well. If you're watching on YouTube, we'll go through your live comments as we speak. But Ozil was being, for me, unfairly treated again. Another football player being dragged over the coals. People focusing on an action they don't agree with rather than looking at the entirety of the picture and looking at Ozil for what he is. Whatever you think about him as a football player, put aside for a moment. Put it aside for a moment. As a humanitarian, Ozil is absolutely top notch. That in itself shouldn't even be up for question and debate. And the one thing that's frustrating me about this whole kind of incident, everybody having outrage over Ozil, and I'll say this right from the beginning. Do you know what he does with his £350,000 per week? Do you personally have any idea what he does? Who is If he does take this 12.5% pay cut or deferred pay cut, where's the money staying at Arsenal Football Club? That instantly costs the government one million, well, about one one million and forty thousand pound ish per year. You can go yourself and do an online tax calculation. If you earn one hundred and fifty thousand pound a week, you pay somewhere in the region around fifteen, no, sorry, around eight million pounds a year in tax. If you drop the salary by twelve point five percent, one million pound a year is lost in taxation, and about one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand pound a year will be lost from national insurance. So that's straight out of the government's pot. Straight out the government's pot and staying with Arsenal. Now, I understand why Arsenal were looking to make people take wage cuts because they're worried about the what the impact the coronavirus is going to have upon their football clubs. But as it stands right now, we don't know whether this season will be completed. Will it be cancelled? Will it be voided? We don't know whether next season will start or finish. All Ozil is suggesting is that can we wait to see the outcome for the club before we look at re reducing our salaries. He's not interested in the pay cut. He would look at a deferral system and he's absolutely right in doing that. There's absolutely no reason for him to agree to a pay cut for a year. If in four or five weeks time, after they've agreed to the pay cut, the finances are okay. I think they've got absolutely every single right to do this. And the reason why Ozil needs to do this is a hell of a lot of his money and a hell of a lot of his time is spent supporting people and helping people across the globe. We have to stop being so myopic and looking, oh, what's he doing for the people of the UK? Well, he already does a lot for that. He doesn't, Ozil doesn't need to do a thing for anybody else in England. He pays, including tax and national insurance, nigh on nine million pounds per year into the system. How much are you paying? Nine million pounds a year he already puts into the system, let alone the millions of pounds that he will spend across shopping buying cars, restaurants, clothing, holidays. Mirza Ozil does so much for this economy and so much for this country just on the PAYE tax that he pays. Firstly, leave him alone. The second side of things, and we're going to delve into this in a little bit more detail now, is the fact that the man does so much humanitarian work. He does so much charity work. Donated his World Cup money, money from the World Cup when they won things. You know? He's been honoured in Germany for the amount of charity work that he does. He donated a wedding dinner and fed 16,000 homeless people a year ago. 16,000 homeless people. Everyone who's outraged by this, how many homeless people have you fed? How much of your salary do you give away? 
Have you been honored for your humanitarian work and charity work that you've done? And I don't care how big, how small. How much do you do in comparison to Ozil? I really want to know. I really do want to know. The summer of last year, they funded surgery for over a thousand children. Again, that was in June of 2019. In December of 2019, planning to fund another thousand children's operations and feed a hundred thousand homeless people. This was ever before Corona. This was ever before anybody thought about donating salaries to help the NHS or, or this happening. Ozil has been doing humanitarian work and charity work since day dot. Since day dot. And I'm seeing a few comments here saying his past good deeds count for nothing. Do you want to know why you're wrong? Do you want to know why you're absolutely wrong that they don't mean anything? You do realize, ladies and gentlemen, that although the corona situation and COVID-19 is horrendous, horrendous, you do realize that there are thousands of children around the world who need operations for other illnesses and other problems. You do realize that homeless people not eating is still, I mean, that in itself is a pandemic. The amount of homeless people we have, the amount of poor people we have globally hasn't changed. In fact, it's become worse because of Corona. So of course it matters. One, if we reduce his salary, that's over a million pounds in the next year that's taken out of taxation. That impacts the NHS, that impacts social care, that impacts every element of our social fiber within the UK. And Arsenal keep that. By the way, Arsenal, with owners that are worth billions of pounds, billions of pounds, and it impacts what Ozil does from his humanitarian work and his charity work. The man gives tens of thousands of pounds a week of his salary away every single week. He also supports a very large extended family. You add those two things together, he's absolutely right to not take a pay cut at this moment in time. Absolutely spot on for doing that. There's no doubt about it at all in my mind. He absolutely is. But I am going to take your views. I am going to take your opinions on this. But it just strikes me as absolutely horrendous journalism to criticize him for a decision, but not ask him why. To do absolutely zero research into why have you decided not to do that? What do you need the money for? I've said it before uh, 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 about Ozil, about Mane, about Salah. People have to realize and understand that these people have been doing great humanitarian work since day dot. They give to charities, they have their own organizations, they donate a lot of their money. We can't just say to them, well, okay, take 20%, 30%, 40% wage cuts. Well, it's going to impact these people badly. Imagine taking money away from Ozil stops children from having operations they desperately need to save their lives. Where is the justice? Where is the human? Where, where is the humanitarian thought within that? There isn't. It's just another dash attack, another rich person, dash attack, another football player. Absolutely, absolute baloney. It really, really is. It says here every other Arsenal player has accepted it. That's not true. Three have uh, three players have said no to it. But like I've said, before we condemn, before we publicly castrate and take Ozil's balls away, why don't we do a bit of research and ask why? Why don't we do a bit of research into why it, he doesn't want to do it? Why is the default, he's rich, he said no to losing money, that makes him a greedy bastard. That's, that is the default position every single time. Every single time. Over and over and over again.
You know, Lincoln comes out with a great comment here. He says, they are acting like they just hoard the money for themselves. It's crazy. Listen, I used to deal with so many Premier League football players. I saw on a monthly basis what they did with their money. I'm not going to name the players. One Dutch player I looked after cleared about 80 grand a month. A lot less than Ozil, of course. Nearly every single penny of that was sent back home, but it was sent in 17 different transfers across different members of his family, aunties, uncles, cousins, brothers. There's another player who was from East Asia. A lot more money was clearing about 220 grand a week after taxation. The vast majority of that, again, sent home in three or four separate transactions uh, back to his homeland that was spread out amongst family. Around 25 to 30,000 pounds a month that was going to local charities, building schools, educating people, as an example. You know, I saw so many, so many of these situations going on that I have absolute in, inside information, if you want to use it, on how the money is spent. And yes, players buy themselves nice cars and they absolutely should. But if Ozil was just driving Ferraris every day, not doing anything for anybody else, not feeding hundreds of thousands of homeless people, not paying for thousands and thousands of children to have op operations, plus multiple other donations that he makes. If he wasn't doing any of that, I'd back it. Also, I don't think Arsenal need to take a massive pay cut. The money isn't going to the NHS. Arsenal Football Club, in mind, if I'm wrong, shoot me down, I'm keeping it. That takes over a million pound a year of taxation away from the government. I, I can't see the, the logic behind this move other than clubs going, we've got to hold on to it, we've got to hold on to it. But these clubs can afford it. They can afford it. And yes, I am still working in banking. A few of you are asking. A few people have said to me as well, yes, I did have a new baby yesterday. Baby's in hospital. I can't be in the hospital because of the corona situation. Um, but I would not be honoring my child if I didn't stand up for things that I believed in. We're going to take a quick call here from uh, Everyday Same. Uh, Everyday Same, welcome to the live stream, mate. What do you want to say? I would not be honoring my oh, child. Oh, there we go. He's on in the back. I'm on in the background. I'm going to. There we go, mate. Yeah, that better. Go on, mate. You've got a couple of minutes. What do you want to say? All right. First of all, congratulations. Oh, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> um, okay. I'll be really quick. I don't think players should get grief for not taking the pay cut because there are thousands of CEOs that earn more than players do. So, what are they doing? Yeah. It's only because it's, it's media fodder. Um, I don't think that it's charitable work. I don't, charitable work is great, but charity is only charity when people hear about it. And generosity is relative. Like if I give you a hundred million pounds, you're not going to sit there and not do nothing with it. You're going to help people because mm. that's kind of, it's just, a, you know, it's human, being humanitarian. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm yeah. just saying don't make, make it be all and end all. And football players are commodities and slaves they, you know, they might as well be cleaning people they're just higher paid they make the money they make because the revenue that they generate is so high so why the hell should he take a pay cut from owners arsenal you said the other day that arsenal's owners have more money than manchester united yet they're not supplying the club with what it needs and all the rest of it and the fans are disgruntled by it yeah. so why should you take a take, take a pay cut from somebody who acts like that but that, they don't yeah. even respect the club yet he's supposed to take a pay cut Mate, this, that would be stupid this is that exactly it and i think that on, on your points you've made there firstly i don't make it the be all, I, I agree with you it isn't it isn't the be all and end all that rich people help Poor, poor, poorer people they do they do humanitarian work and charity work i think what i find interesting is that having done a job that i did working with ultra what they call the ultra the ultra net worth uh popu population of the uk and europe i saw what so many did for charities i saw what so many did with their money and 95 percent don't scream and shout about it the reason that footballers often often do is because they're trying to raise awareness example being with rashford donating money to the to the homeless charities a bit like this gentleman walking around his garden now he's not a celebrity but if they hadn't highlighted what um captain tom i forgot his surname uh, i feel really bad for getting his surname if they hadn't if people hadn't highlighted what he'd done he wouldn't have raised 27 million pounds so often you need to highlight things to draw awareness to it but it, it's getting the balance right so you're absolutely right there but the fact that he does it and that's all being ignored in this situation. You know, I've seen Piers Morgan go on a tyrant rant, and it's a case of, I hope people realise that 12.5% isn't being given to the NHS that, that, or, or to a charity. That 12.5% is going to stay in the football club because they think they're going to go out of business. That in itself, and I don't think they are going to go out of business, Arsenal. 
And that takes over a million pounds of taxation away from the NHS, from social health care, from local authorities. And it's that case of, well, local authorities council tax. That's, that's actually slightly wrong. But if you get where I'm coming from. And my, my, that's my view on all of this. It's a case of it just stinks to attack a football player for this. You've got, a, you know, Richard Branson's talking about like furloughing staff, giving them unpaid leave. And everyone's up in arms because he can afford to pay them during this time. Now, I know football players are not on minimum wage or 50, 60, 70 grand a year. They're on a hell of a lot more money. But the principle is the same. You've got an owner that can more than cover any sort of, if, if Arsenal lose 20, 30% of their turnover, he can more than cover it. Financial fair play rules are being relaxed. It's an absolute nonsense. But as ever, let's just attack this rich. But I, you know, I would love Piers Morgan to show us how much of his salary or how much of his earnings that he is going to additionally give away. I bet he doesn't, you know, I, I, you know, a slightly separate incident. The, the, someone in the end and a journalist from the independent today attacked Newcastle and said it's a disgrace. They're accepting that money. Um, it shouldn't be allowed to go through because of the Saudi owners. Now, somebody's response was, I mean, it's brilliant. You know, the same Saudi regime that are buying Newcastle own about 15 percent of that. The very newspaper that that journalist works for. So by that definition, he should be quitting his job. Because <laughs> you know, I mean, like this is the thing when everybody sits there and they act virtuous. Is if you want to become a virtuous person, it doesn't take very long to rip you apart. You know, I saw one when, J, when JK. You know, there was one with a rich guy was talking about we shouldn't have borders anywhere. We should just let people roam free. And then, and then it was funny because this guy has got like a moat around his house. It's like, bro, why you got a moat then? Like, why are you so, you're stopping intruders? But yet you think that it, 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 all the time I see this with people is hypocrisy, hypocrisy, hypocrisy. Well, it's like you know, he who is without sin cast the first stone. You know, it's like Saudi Arabia don't make the bombs that they're using. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, they're, they're given to yeah the countries that condemn Saudi Arabia or, or, or the people. That's the way I always look at these things. Why I don't get involved in it? It's like people. How I look, he goes, yeah, Saudi are bad because they're doing X, Y, and Z. Well, who, well, who's supplying them with the means to do that? Oh, it's the country that I'm from. Well, I hate that. Well, yeah, but you're still here. Like you people, it's like you see it all the time. People are like, oh, I hate my government. I hate this. I hate that. But then when they can get a benefit from being part of that nation, they're like, oh, I'm entitled to it, though, aren't I? So, well, I thought you said that, that you hate everything about this country, but you're still going to take your entitlements. Now, I know people have every right to do it, but I just find there's so much, you know, people that are like, I'm anti-capitalistic, and they're sitting there with an iPhone and a Starbucks in their hand. I just look at it and think, I'm not judging you. I, can't, I don't listen to anything you've got to say because you don't live by what you preach. And I, that's probably the overarching message here. There's just everybody wants to look virtuous. Everybody wants to look like a saint. Everybody wants to look like they're the, the most humble and most nicest person on the planet. But you start digging enough. And you think, well, that was a bad comment. Or, But you don't do this. And do you give to charity? And, well, you you know, a lot of businesses I know give to charity. I used to do work in the corporate sector. A lot of people give to yeah. charity because it, it saves giving that money away in taxation. So if you make a half a million pound profit a year as a business, but then you give 300 grand of it to a charity, that just stops you paying tax. And a lot of a lot of businesses will say, I'd rather give to charity than give money to the tax put man. But you could spin that in either direction, depending on how, whether you like. And that's why a lot of the time, so I, I remember reading, you know, another bank I used to work for gives millions of pounds away to small and local businesses that are coming up in the tech industry. But then when people say, oh, they don't pay enough in tax, it's like, yeah, but look how many tens of millions they give away in these areas. It's, they, you know, the multi-millions of pounds a year they give away to charities. You don't factor that in because it doesn't fit your narrative. And that's my problem with all of this. It's all about political point scoring and virtue signaling, essentially. Well, a lot of it comes down to that. All these points are coming down to the same thing. It's just the media using things that trigger the public and portraying facts or figures in whatever light they know that's going to trigger people in order to sell papers. Of so course. Comes the same thing. Of, of course, mate. That's what it comes down to. But that's, that's kind we've of why we're here. Arsenal, we've, yeah. got, we've, got, we've got an Arsenal player that doesn't play on the pitch, that earns more, that doesn't try on the pitch, that earns more than everybody else, that's intelligent enough to not let himself get exploited. But we're not saying it like that. We'll just say he's tight and he's horrible and he's, you know, and that's it. There's... I know when you actually break it down, it's almost a nothing story, but they sensationalize yeah. it into one. And it's, and it's important because I've seen, it's interesting. I've seen three or four responses from people in the comment section on Twitter going, how can you defend him? They listen to what you say and show. And I go, oh, I didn't know he did all of that. And that's the whole point about balance. You know, if Piers Morgan this morning comes out and says, this is his decision. This is what he's done. I know it looks this way, but before you judge him, he's done these, he does these five, six brilliant things. I don't like what he's done here. You know, what's your opinion? You might still want to condemn him. You still might think he should do it for Arsenal. 
But that isn't what's being pushed out. Nobody, why I've not heard it from anybody says, oh, it's, it's terrible the way he's treating his employers. Because that's just, that would be an argument that I would buy. If, if you want to say, I think he's being disrespectful to Arsenal, I'll buy that. But they're trying yeah, to spin I, it I like mean, he doesn't care about the humanitarian, like the, the, the rest of society, which is, that's, what's, that's how they're trying to spin it. That's what's disgraceful. See, I don't see it like that. I see it that if he did do it, he would be stupid because these people can afford it and they don't put the money into their club. So if you have owned it, it was like the culture at United. It got, thank God it's changing now. But half the people who were going, oh, well, this place should do this and this place should do that. But they're in a culture where it seemed that the owners didn't care about the club. So how can they then want loyalty from their employees? If Arsenal have, Arsenal have got the money that they've got, yet they don't put the money into the club, so they fundamentally disrespect the club, yet the players are supposed to take a pay cut from owners that can afford it and fundamentally disrespect the club, they would be stupid. To no, I, I agree, especially, and, and as I all said, he hasn't refused point blank to never look at it. He says, I want to see what the, and this was, I actually said that made this point a few weeks ago when they were talking about the 30% wage cut. My first question was, if I'm sitting there now as a player, and by the way, the players, have so, what I love about football players is as a, as a union man myself, I love how much power they have from a, financial standpoint of what they can drag yeah, in now they yeah. shouldn't district that they, they they're one of the only workers on the planet who can genuinely dictate what they're going to earn and what they're going to make and I, I find that brilliant because if we could all create if we could all make ourselves that important to our organizations yeah, we'd all be living a very very lovely life but the point i would make is, yeah, is still relative though, though. of course it's it's, yes it is relative it is relative for, for what you bring in because i think people can do that but on different scales um, but on, on Ozil, I you know I said this thing, I said, if I was in that position, I'd be saying, on, let me see the finances first. Like I would agree to it. If the company, if my company come to me now and said, Terry, look, we want to keep you one. We're going to do this, but we've got to reduce bonuses by X amount. We've got to reduce salaries by this because we're really struggling. I would say, yes, but can you show me? I, I would, I would ask for proof before I vote on something. I want to see proof of it. I want to see that what you're you know, I take a pay cut. Then it turns out we've got 50 million pounds in a cash reserve. Then I'm thinking, hang on, I've been absolutely done. And that's all Ozil has asked. He said, I want to see what the finances actually look like before I make a decision. Because I've seen mul multiple businesses have done this during the coronavirus situation. They have used it as an excuse, in my opinion, to implement mass redundancies, the closure of branches, shutting down of certain operations, the redundancies, etc. They've used it as an excuse. I think it's been on the roadmap for them. and gone, oh, we can, we can hide behind this pandemic to push through what we've been trying to get done anyway to reduce all these outgoings. And yeah. that's and that's why they've got to be very, very shrewd. Look, other players have agreed to it. That's on them. Fair enough for them doing that. I've got no issue with them doing that at all. Um, but let's see how the, how the land lies. I really appreciate you coming on and having your say, mate. Thank you very, very much indeed. One last comment I wanted to run through. This is from Brandon. He says, Terry doesn't realise. Thank you. He says, Cronky doesn't invest money. Number one, that's, that's, where the, that's where the argument should be. Before players, your owner should be getting attacked if anybody in this situation. Uh, we have a huge wage bill. Great. Well, you, you've given people that money. They've now got commitments with that money that they need to honor. That's on you for doing that. Back to first point, your, your owner can top it up if he needs to. Number three, no Champions League money. You're not going to get that anyway. You weren't going to make Champions League this season anyway. So that's a, a red herring for me. Rely on match day revenue. Very, very true. 25% of your income relies on that. So I know I know that exactly. That's a worry. That is a concern. No doubt about it. Five, if we want to buy players in the transfer window, we have to take a wage cut. And great. So on four, five, and two, you make some good points there. All Ozil was said is, let, basically, let me see the finances. Let me see how the, the land lies financially before I make a decision. That is all that Ozil has said. But we don't like facts. We like to sensationalize this. Listen, until next time, take care of yourselves, everybody. Look, I'm 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 in full support of Ozil in this situation. I really, really am. I want your views, I want your opinions, uh, and we'll see you all again soon. Bye bye.